The New England Patriots are looking for their next great quarterback. And in today's video, I'm drafting Jaden Daniels and making him the face of the franchise by winning the team their seventh Super Bowl trophy. But welcome to the New England Patriots rebuild and let's begin. We are back today on the rebuild circuit. Today, the New England Patriots are first AFC East team and I think we're gonna have our work cut out for us today. New head coach Gerard Mayo does not have a super star studded roster to build around in the first few years of his tenure. And this is what we were working with. Mac Jones currently at quarterback, Kendrick Bourne and Devontae Parker at wide receiver. Ramondre Stevenson, I do like him in real life. I actually have him on a dynasty team in fantasy football, but for this rebuild, will he be able to develop into a stud running back that is to be seen. The offensive line has a couple of pieces, although David Andrews is getting up there in age. Cole Strange is still kind of a unique prospect. We'll see if he can develop it all this year. Brent Brown, he's a little bit up there in age. Michael Wenu is on the last year of his contract. So we will see if we bring him back as well. Hunter Henry, Mike Kosicki at tight end. Don't really like either of those options in real life or for this team. And defensively is really where most of the talent is. Christian Barmore, Matthew Judon, Christian Gonzalez, Jonathan Jones. But a lot of those guys are older and I'm probably going to see the market for players like Judon, maybe even Peppers to some of these veterans that have some value. And we're just going to gut this team, get as much capital and as much nice up and coming young players we can get for these guys and really try and build this team from the ground floor. And I think here's the first trade that I'm going to do. Matthew Judon and Jabril Peppers and the Titans are offering me Jeffrey Simmons and some day three picks. Simmons always develops into being one of the best defensive players in the game. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this trade, not mess with negotiating, trying to get another pick. I'm gonna accept it and we're gonna bring home Jeffrey Simmons. And we just found another really good trade. Kyle Pitts and Arnold Ebiketti from the Falcons and a fifth and seventh round pick for Trent Brown, Jonathan Jones, two guys that are getting up there towards the age of 30. I really like this trade as well. In filtering out the last couple of old expensive veterans, Hunter Henry and Devontae Parker, I'm gonna take on Paulson Adebo to pair with Christian Gonzalez. We're gonna have two really, really nice young corners and you know, a late round pick as well with the fifth rounder. But Adebo, Gonzalez, I'm excited for that. And I think the last trade I'm gonna do is in JC Jackson, David Andrews, and Kendrick Bourne. Really just all of these veterans on the Patriots for Kevin Dotson, age 26 years old, star dev right guard. He was actually one of the best guards in the league in real life this year for the Rams. I think this is the last year of his contract, so we're probably gonna have to pay him after this year. We're gonna have plenty of cap space, and I think just getting rid of these three high priced veterans for a nice up and coming guard. I really do like the value. All right, so here's what the roster is looking like. It's completely different. And let me know if you do like this rebuild style. I tend to do this in every single one of my videos. If you are new to the channel, I really like to get rid of the older veterans that have some value, get some younger assets, get some more draft picks. And that's kind of the way that I try and rebuild these teams. And it's not always the most realistic thing, getting players like Kyle Pitts or Jeffrey Simmons for some of these older veterans. But I think it is pretty fun, something unique. So let me know if you like that or if you do want to see a more traditional type of rebuild. But this is what the offense is looking like. Mac Jones, this will be his last season starting for the team. I haven't even mentioned it yet, but Jaden Daniels, he is going to be the quarterback of the future on this team. I think that's who the Patriots are going to draft in real life with the number three overall pick. So he's going to be the star of this video and we're going to see how he develops and progresses throughout his career. I'll show you guys that draft class in a minute, but for right now, this is what the offense looks like. Quickly over to the defensive side of the ball. Jeffrey Simmons looks like a stud now on the defensive line with Barmore and Godchow, Adebo, Gonzalez, and Jones as our three corners. We have Duggar now starting at strong safety. And then Ebi Teke is in at left outside linebacker with Bentley. The defense, offense, we're not looking too good. 76 offense, 81 defense. But in a couple years, we're going to be a legit team. Taking a look at the draft class and you will find this is down to a T of what the 2024 draft is looking like. All the top players and here i think towards the middle of the first round i actually didn't even see him where is he at Jaden daniels for some reason is minus 35 so far on this big board but he will be our selection no matter where we are picking through the mid-season point and the patriots are actually doing better than i thought they would be at this point three and four third in the afc east and let's go take a look at players ready to negotiate we're gonna have a hundred and twenty eight million dollars in cap room that might be the most I have ever seen in this game so far. But Michael Wenu, I do not know if I want to bring him back. He wants around $62.5 million. He's a good player, but he has no interest in signing with us right now. Maybe I'll give him a neutral deal 
And if he won't accept this, it might not work out. So I'm gonna give him the offer. Not going to accept it right now, but we'll see. Kyle Duggar though, I think I might end up letting him walk at the age of 27, maybe 28 when this contract starts. $22 million is not a ton, but I do think he's not that good. Star 83 overall, I think we can get better not have to pay this guy, you know, 20, $25 million. Kevin Dotson, we did trade for him. I do want to give him a contract. I think a neutral deal is fine for now. He will accept that. That's awesome. Gesicki, I do not think I want him back. Josh Usse, I do not think I want him back either. $65 million. There's no way that's legit. $65 million is how much he's asking for. That, that seems kind of crazy. He's definitely not going to get that from me. Zeke, older running back. I'll pass on that. And then the rest of these guys are backups. So not a ton of free agents to bring back. We'll keep an eye on Owenu, but I think for right now, I'm pretty happy with just letting these guys walk. The season is over and it went pretty much how I did expect it to the last half of the season. We in five and 12, 81 overall as a team though, which is, I guess, some improvement. We're going to have a lot of cap space this off season. And of course, we're going to get our quarterback of the future but five wins, kind of similar to what the Patriots did this year. Definitely not a great year. Stats wise, I decided to use the Kansas City offense and Mac Jones had a horrific year. 3,500 yards, 23 touchdowns to 22 picks, rushing 1,200 yards and 17 touchdowns from Andre Stevenson. That's a pretty good year. Maybe he got an upgrade. We'll see. Receiving 1,000 yards and five touchdowns for Juju in the Chiefs offense, Al Pitts. Only 700 yards and three touchdowns. That's a little bit surprising. I don't know why Mike Gesicki had more yards and more touchdowns. That makes no sense to me. Defensively, Simmons had 13 and a half sacks. I'm telling you guys, he's an absolute beast in this game. Finley had three picks. Duggar had two. Adebo had two. I do not see our rookie Christian Gonzalez anywhere. He did not have a pick this year, which sucks. He's probably not going to win. It's a rookie of the year. And here's what the offense is looking like. Kyle Pitts somehow did improve a lot this year. Stevenson did improve as well. He may have a future on this team as our running back, but outside of him, not a ton of movement anywhere else. Defensively, Simmons improved, far more improved. Christian Gonzalez improved. And outside of that, not a ton of movement once again for this team. The shocker, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Cowboys meet in the Super Bowl and the Cowboys win 27-21. Deron Bland, one Super Bowl MVP, Rishi Rice, Offensive Rookie of the Year, and Brian Brzee as Defensive Rookie of the Year. We do not take home any awards. Hopefully next year, we can put our quarterback, Jane Daniels, in a nice position. Hopefully take home that Rookie of the Year award. Last look at our pending free agents, Kyle Pitts. I will accept his fifth year option. That's a no brainer for us. Mike Owenu, I'm going to give him a player friendly deal, and that's going to be about it. I'm not going to give him a neutral. I'll give him a little bit more respect than that. But if he does not accept this, I'm going to let him walk. He would like to play for next for a new team next year. That is fine. Owenu is gone. Duggar is up to superstar, which is piquing my interest a little bit, but I'm going to hold firm. I'm going to hold firm and let him walk. $30 million, we'll keep that in the bank. And somehow Mike Gesicki's up to superstar as well. I'm gonna let him walk. Uche already said I'm gonna let him walk. Mac Jones not bringing back him on his fifth year. And the rest of these guys, yeah, they're not coming back. For agency wise, the only one I'm interested in is Josh Allen. And he has no interest in our team whatsoever, but I'm gonna give him a super player friendly deal. And we will see if he does wanna play for us. We have enough money. We're probably gonna overpay a lot. I think for the next four to five years though, or. Even the next six years, he's still going to be a really good player, only at the age of 27. I'm going to give him this offer. We'll see if he accepts. If not, not the end of the world. If he does, we're going to get another really nice pass rusher to join our team. Well, he's going to sound with the Cardinals, so we are not going to have to overpay for him at all. But there's also not a lot of other free agents I really want to sign in this free agency. Just a lot of older veterans, not super high overall. He was really the big fish this time around, but... Let's go ahead and move on to the draft and really get this rebuild going. And here's the fifth and final mock draft with no quarterback expected to go in the top three. We're supposed to take Brock Bowers, even though we have Kyle Pitts just picked up his fifth year option. But yeah, Brock Bowers. But let's see where Jane Daniels is expected to go. It is to the Minnesota Vikings. So that's not too bad. We do not have to trade up or do anything of that nature. At number four, one pick behind where the Patriots are actually picking in this year's draft will be taken. Jaden Daniels. All right, here we are with pick number four, Jaden Daniels, scrambler archetype, 6'4", 200 pounds, his physicals, elite acceleration, elite speed, elite jumping, great throw power. He looks like a really, really nice quarterback prospect. We're going to take him here. He is going to be hidden dev. 
oh my goodness, his stats are actually really, really good. 93 throw power, 90 acceleration, 93 speed. He's going to be a beast. Here we are at the top of the second round. I thought taking a wide receiver may be the best play in Troy Franklin or Tez Walker, but I do think this left tackle here out of Yale, Agile Karan. I'm not even going to attempt to say his last name. I do not think I could say that correctly, but he's shot up the draft boards. He's got fairly good physicals. His skills look fairly good, and we need some offensive line help now with a young quarterback trading away and getting rid of a lot of our key offensive linemen in the last two off seasons. Here we are, Karan. I'm going to draft him. He's going to be normal dev, which is not super good 87 strength. And now I'm thinking we might have should have taken a wide receiver hopefully he's a decent overall here in the third round now an edgerin cooper out of texas a&m is still on the board a 6'3 230 pound middle linebacker he's a stud i even like him in real life i think he's going to be a really nice player but a 4 5 5 40 elite change of direction elite jumping great speed i'm going to take him here he's going to be hidden dev now we have our mike linebacker and a beast in the middle of our defense. All right, I'm gonna do something fun here just because we are in the fourth round. Johnny Wilson out of FSU. He doesn't have the best physicals, but he is six foot seven. I think he would just be kind of a fun player to use in Madden. See if we can develop him into being like a Megatron type of wide receiver. I'm gonna draft him here. He is gonna be normal dev, but I do like, of course, his size still. Six seven, 237 pounds with 90 speed, 86 jumping. I still think he could be like a really good receiver for us. We got one of the trades. We also got a fourth round pick. So here, just two picks later, Bo Braid out of Maryland is a pretty interesting prospect. The top of the board for all free safeties in his 40 yard dash, his broad jump, very nice athlete. And I think here we could use some help in our secondary after getting rid of Duggar, Peppers. In his skills, there is kind of a big range. You know, man coverage is a C, his pursuit A to C, zone coverage is C to F. So he's kind of a toss-up player, but I'm going to draft him here. Bo Brady is going to be hidden dev. 90 acceleration, 89 speed. I actually really like this pick. All right, I'm going to do it. Ladd McConkey has been on the board round after round after round, staring me in the eye with his round one to projection. His numbers and his physicals, his skills do not look good. But the Patriots have a long history of getting these small white slot receivers. And I think McConkey here is going to be the next iteration of that. Going to draft him. He's going to be normal dev. His attributes look fairly decent. I mean, pretty good for a slot wide out. 93 acceleration, 88 speed. In the fifth round, you know, we'll take it. I did tell myself I was going to take a center in the next round. Whoever the top guy on the board was, and that is Will Putman out of Clemson. Going to draft him. Not going to think about it too much. 86 strength. We'll see if he can start for us this year and maybe develop. And here is the draft recap. Jaden Daniels is a 75 overall. Huron, left tackle out of Vio is a 73, which is not looking super good right now. Edgerin Cooper is a 72. Johnny Wilson's a 72. Bo Braid is a 70. McConkey's a 72. And then the CPU drafted a bunch of, you know, not super good players towards the end of the draft, but you know, what can you really expect? They also did take Amani Bailey out of TCU, a 72 overall running back, which could be a nice one two punch now with Stevenson, but overall a decent draft. Not something super good, but I am happy we just got Daniels and some nice developmental pieces that maybe could be developed and turn into some good players down the road. If you were curious, here are the top players in the draft. Harrison, Neighbors, Fashanu, Alt, Caleb Williams are the top five. And then you go down a little bit and you will find our quarterback. Keep on going, keep on going. There he is, Jaden Daniels right behind Brian Thomas Jr., and Jared Verse. But here's what the team is looking like. Definitely still a lot of holes on the offensive line, but hopefully we see some development out of some of these young guys this year. Maybe dots into a mid 85. Strange up to an 80. Ron hopefully gets up to like a mid 70, high 70. That would be awesome to see. But right tackle, we still have a massive hole. Desperately need to take one early in the draft next year. I went ahead and moved Johnny Wilson up to wide receiver one just to see this year if he can get any sort of reps and improve. I'm probably gonna put Kyle Pitts in the slot and run the Cowboys offense. Just have a nice target there for Jaden Daniels to develop with this year and just have some decent numbers with a nice actual viable target. Defensively, Barmore and Simmons is up to superstar X Factor already, which is awesome. Adebo, Gonzalez, I love our young cornerbacks. Edgerin Cooper now is in a middle linebacker next to Bentley. The defense actually is not too bad. We just have a lot of young players that need to have a couple years to develop. But I think if we just get another linebacker, maybe a safety if Mapu or Braid cannot develop quickly, and then another defensive lineman to pair with Simmons, and then maybe move Barmore to defensive tackle and just get another 
superstar left end, I think our defense would be ready to compete you know, right away. Here is a quick look at the draft and a lot of linemen at the top of the board, which I really do like to see if we do get one of those top picks at left tackle, Dakota Snyder is the top player out of Texas A&M. Lonzo Lacey, Jay Dowling, two other really good players that we could pair with Jeffrey Simmons and even wide receiver, Anthony Dixon. I keep forgetting that we do not have a lot of good weaponry outside of really Cal Pitts and Ramondre Stevenson and then Cassidy fell. So either of these guys in the top five be a really nice addition to the team. We're obviously going to have to see how they develop, what their skills are through scouting and all that. But if we do get a top five pick, which is in the realm of possibility, I do think one of these five would be a really nice player for it. Halfway through the season and the Patriots are kind of where I expected them to be two and five last place in the division players ready to negotiate we have a hundred and sixty three million dollars in cap room that is pretty unbelievable but paulson adebo is coming to the table i'm going to give him a player friendly deal i want to go all in yet just so we can see if we can save some money he's not going to sign at the moment but i will make sure that we do get adebo back he's an important part of the future of our defense stevenson has progressed a decent amount we have the money i'll give him a player friendly deal as well He's not going to accept at the moment, but I do think we can get both of these guys back. Christian Barmore, I think he's a solid player. Neutral deal, I think he will accept. He will. Mac Jones, obviously not going to bring him back. Jelani Tavai, he does not have interest in returning. He's also 27, which is not really that old. We did just draft Edrin Cooper, so I may just look to let him walk and then replace him in free agency. And then Marco Wilson, Sean Wade, just some backups. I do not think I want to bring back Devon Godshaw. I think I want to move Barmore to defensive tackle and then move... Uh, just draft somebody or sign somebody in fridge to take over at right end. Dietrich Wise can leave as well. So yeah, none of these guys are really too interested in. We just have to keep our eye on Stevenson, Adebo, and then decide on Tavai by the time free agency comes around. The season is over and somehow the Patriots got to 6-11. and 11. And I say that because if you look at the team ranks, we're at the bottom of the league in every single category, which does not bode well for the development of our young quarterback and other surrounding positions. Jaden Daniels with a fairly decent rookie season, 3,400 yards, 25 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Rushing wise, Stevenson over 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. Daniels had 500 yards and five rushing touchdowns, which is fairly decent. Receiving Kyle Pitts in the slot almost had 1,000 yards. He had six touchdowns though. Johnny Wilson, a solid rookie season, 840 yards and five touchdowns. I will take it. Sacks wise, nine and a half for Simmons. He continues to be a beast. If I had five, Wise had five, Godshow had three, probably all three of these guys will be gone next year. We're gonna have a lot of sacks, you know, to replace. Interceptions wise, Mapu, our second year safety, had three picks. Adibo had two. Marcus Jones had two. Binley had a pick. Raid, our rookie, had a pick, which is cool. And Edrin Cooper also had an interception. Roster development and Jaden Daniels is a superstar player, 82 overall. Offensive line is still really, really bad. Hal Pitts is up to a 90 though. Johnny Wilson, not a ton of improvement this year. Defensively, Christian Gonzalez is an 85 superstar. Edger and Cooper had a great season up to a 76. Raids a 73. Mapu, probably gonna be our future starter at strong safety. Alston and Debo's up to an 84. Defensive line is still looking fairly good with Jeffrey Simmons leading the way. Overall defense had a lot of improvement this year. Offensively, did not have a lot of progression but to be fair we don't have a ton of talent on that side of the ball season recap the 49ers destroyed the kansas city chiefs in the super bowl and brock purdy was super bowl mvp this could have been you know the super bowl result in an alternate universe i could definitely see that but Jaden daniels that's the most important thing did win offensive rookie of the year which is absolutely massive for us i don't know if that's going to be his upgrade to superstar or if he's also going to get one the superstar X factor, that would be pretty crazy. Last chance for a Debo and Stevenson. I'm going to give a Debo a very player friendly deal. I do not know if this is going to work, but I'm going to offer it to him. He is going to sign with us, which is very nice. Kind of a sigh of relief that he's not going to go to the open market. We have 165 million left. Stevenson, he's 27 years old, 85 overall. I'm going to give him the previous offer. Actually, you know what? No, we're going to go down. He didn't accept that. We're going to go down to a neutral offer now. Put our foot down. If he does not accept, we're going to have to figure some things out. He wants to play for another team. Fine by me. Stevenson will be gone. Mac Jones not bringing him back. Cole Strange, I will accept his fifth year option. He's at least, you know, one of the solid linemen we have. And Tavai, I'll probably let him walk. Marco Wilson. I'm going to let all these guys walk. We're just going to start fresh with this entire team. Really going to free agency the draft and have another 
huge, huge offseason on our hands. This is what I'm talking about. Brandon Ayuk, superstar dev, is on the free agent market. I'm going to throw him an absolute bag, a six-year deal. I want him to be our wide receiver one of the future. We could sign Tua Tonga by law. I'm just kidding, Patriots fans. We're not going to ring into Tua. But Brandon Ayuk, 27 years old, I gave him a huge offer. Houston Texans, though, are technically the highest team on his rankings right now. I might have to give him a little bit more money. But Joe Tooney, Joe Benito, Wyatt Teller, some good guards, but they also are pretty old. I think I could maybe bring one of them in for a couple years just to have some veteran presence. But Sam Cosme, actually, 26 years old, 87 overall. I might give him an offer, actually. But again, he doesn't have a ton of interest in playing for us either. Now it's the moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and sim through here and see if we do get Ayuk over the Texans. Really hoping we do. This would be a huge addition to our offense, and we do not. He's going to sign with the Texans. I think that's, what, two years in a row the Texans have stolen somebody from us. That is not good. But we do get Sam Cosme. That's our consolation prize. I do like Cosme. He'll be a nice guard for us. But, man, there's somebody like Ayuk on the free agent market really want to get him. The top of this draft is fairly ridiculous. I mean, Dakota Snyder, Alonzo Lacey, Jay Dowling, and even Cassidy Fells are all amazing prospects. But the thing is, is we have the 11th pick in the draft. So we're not going to get any of those guys unless we trade up. So I think I am going to move up. We'll see how far. I think Lacey is supposed to be the number one overall pick. I, I think he's supposed to be Lacey and then the tackle but I think I do want one of those players to just be a foundational piece on our team and on one, on one of our trenches. But I'm gonna see what it will cost to move up and then make a decision on which one of these guys to you know really target. All right, so the Titans want a little bit too much. I'm offering Keon White, just kind of a backup lineman, two first and a second to move up 10 spots. And they're not really biting on it. And I think just how many flaws we have on this team currently, I'm not gonna do this trade. We'll see with pick second or third if we can get a cheaper deal but for the first overall pick i don't think we have enough juice for it right now something i'm probably gonna have to do to make this trade go through is send cole strange to the texans because they do have a need at left guard i did forget that we do have dotson and cosme now so we don't really have a need for these three guards unless we're going to move one to center which i don't really think i'm going to do we're going to see how much value we can get from this package right here decent amount i'll probably offer in Maybe a second, and if that doesn't work, the first, and then maybe try to do it with some late round picks. But let's take a look. 2025 second round pick. Will it get it done? It's close. It is close. So we're going to try to throw in some day two, day three picks and see if we can get it done. All right, the trade is done. Cole Strange, our first round pick this year, our second round pick this year, our third round pick this year, and then a fifth and a seventh for the number two overall pick. And we're probably going to take the best player, hopefully this draft really only between two players alonzo lacy and cassidy fells i thought that lacy was going to be the top pick but ended up being that tackle lacy looks really really good elite jumping great speed great acceleration he just looks like a generational right end prospect a tackle b pursuit a power move a impact block a awareness i mean this guy's going to be probably an 80 overall maybe a superstar dev jay dowling just looks like a worse version of him so i'm probably not going to select him although i mean he looks really good as well but i just think he's a little bit worse we'll see though at the end at the draft recap the cassidy fills is also a plug and play generational really good tackle i mean elite strength elite agility he looks really really good too a run block a run block power i mean just all across the board this guy looks really really good so i have a pretty tough decision to make because if i take cassidy our offensive line is probably done if i take alonzo lacy pair him with jeffrey simmons we're gonna have a really nice defensive line i think i'm gonna take alonzo lacy and my one reason for this is i think you can find solid and good linemen on free agency more so than defensive linemen alonzo lacy Gonna draft him here, 88 strength, 85 jumping, 83 speed, 87 acceleration. I'm hoping we made the right pick here. Here all the way in the fourth round now and Manu Vasquez from LSU. But he's got elite speed, elite acceleration, elite agility. Just a really nice speedster, 5'8", kind of like a Tyreek Hill build. I'm gonna draft him here. He's gonna be hidden dev. And wow, he actually has some really, really nice metrics. I mean, if you do rebuilds and you do franchise mode, if you see any of these smaller wide receivers with great speed late in the draft, they usually always tend to be hidden dev. And now we might have 
Maybe a pretty good wide receiver for us. Gonna take one more player here and then let the CPU take over for these late rounds. I think I'm gonna target a running back, but I'm not exactly sure who to take. None of these guys are really standing out. The top one on the board is Joe Clark out of Butler, but his metrics are not good at all. I mean, a 4 5 40 for an elusive back is not good. But besides that, nothing really super good. Here's someone interesting, Trent Lunsford. He's a receiving back. But a 4-3-7-40, the best in the draft. Good broad jump, good vertical leap. He looks like a fairly ath athletic player. Lead acceleration, great speed. I'm going to draft him here. He's going to be normal depth, but 95 acceleration and 94 speed is pretty good. And with how our running back room is looking right now, might end up being our starter next year. The draft recap is pretty good. Lacey's a 78 overall. We do not know if he's going to be superstar, star, whatnot. But if he's superstar, I'm pretty happy with that pick. Vasquez is a 73. Lunsford's a 73. The CPU drafted some pretty bad players. But then Johnny Reddick out of Alabama in the seventh round is a 72, which is fairly decent. But let's take a look and see who the other candidates for this pick were and what their overalls are. So Oscar Thompson was the best player in this draft. He went number eight to the Jets, but I wasn't really gonna take a receiver that high. Kasim Capers in the second round, we didn't have a second round pick, but he was fairly good. The tight end out of NC State's an 80. And then Fellows, who I was thinking about taking either him or Lacey, that was really the other option. He's a 79, went to the Giants. I'm pretty happy though, because I do think it's harder to find Really nice stud defensive lineman in this game. And then Snyder, who went number one overall, he is a 77, which is slightly worse than you know, my two picks. And Dowling is a 77. So we did get the best edge rusher. I'm pretty happy with our selection. Let's move on. All right, so here is the team heading into year two at Jaden Daniels. And I do feel pretty bad because our offensive talent is still not good at all. Our offensive line needs a right tackle desperately. We need another center. Really two offensive linemen away, but Dodson, Cosme are pretty good on the inside. Hopefully the left tackle we drafted can develop this year. He's up to a 76, which is fairly decent for his first season, but we just really need help now at right tackle, center. I like our tight end, of course, but we still need a bona fide wide receiver. I wish we had Ayuk, which sucks, but hopefully next for agency, next draft, there's somebody really, really good. Vasquez, I might move him up and he can be like our wide receiver too this year. I just want to get a lot of reps for these young guys because Douglas and Juju, they're just guys. They're not going to really improve or be anything for us down the road. But defensively, I really like how we look now. Simmons, Barmore at defensive tackle. Lacey now at right end. Gonzalez, Adebo, Mapu in the secondary. Linebacking unit could definitely use some help, but Bentley and Cooper are the two studs right now. Right outside linebacker desperately needs somebody. And uh, left outside linebacker, I think we're okay for now. But a couple of holes still on this team. But I do think we are getting a nice core to continue know this rebuild taking a look at the draft class and there are two good tackles that we could target next year Braden webb and deron washington definitely interesting another wide receiver antonio finney a linebacker actually all of our needs right here again at the top of the draft fairly interesting and the new england patriots are one in six the dolphins somehow are zero and seven so the afc east is really struggling this year but wow this is our worst start so far of this rebuild which is a little bit interesting but not a great start. Players ready to negotiate 94 overall of Kyle Pitts. I am going to sign him to a contract. Hopefully he'll accept a neutral. He will. So we're going to save a decent amount of money there. Abi Ketty, I will give him a contract as well. Neutral. I don't want to give him that much money. He will sign though. Marcus Jones. I'll think about him. Juju is gone. Kevin Dotson is back to the negotiating table. So is Jawan Bentley. Man, I'm probably going to let Bentley walk. And I think I will try to sign Dotson just because we don't have any linemen. A two-year deal for him he's going to accept it after that two-year deal is up i might move on from him but for right now i'm going to give him that marcus jones if he does not accept his neutral offer i'll just replace him uh, he actually didn't accept it that's actually kind of surprising so we brought back everybody i want to bring back and i think juju bentley their time is up we have another big off season on the horizon sitting at one and six another rally from the new england patriots has us end six and eleven which is really just the worst a scenario because we're just we're just mid we're not getting a top draft pick we're not making the playoffs and once again our rankings for the team does not look good at all stats for the season another good year from Jaden daniels 3800 yards 26 touchdowns to 11 interceptions rushing wise lunsford our rookie had 700 yards and four touchdowns just not a super good season juju i didn't have him as wide receiver one i didn't have him starting in the depth chart Somehow he had 900 yards and seven touchdowns. Uh, Vasquez, 950 and five touchdowns. Wilson, 
Anki's just getting no reps, which I think it had him as wide receiver three. I don't really understand Sim, but uh, none of these guys had super great years. Defensively, 14 and a half sacks for Jeffrey Simmons and Lacey had 10 and a half. That's our rookie right there. That's pretty intriguing. Uh, seven and a half for Barmore. So our defensive line really eight. Finley had five and a half. Ebby DK had four and a half. But interceptions wise, three for Gonzalez, three for Debo. Offensively, Jaden Daniels is up to an 86 overall, despite having a pretty bad amount of players around him. Lunsford and Bailey, just nothing at the running back position. Vasquez is up to a 77 though. So I actually think he has a future for us on this team at receiver. But the offensive line with low, I mean, it's just, it's just bad. But defensively, we have some good news because Lacey is a superstar X Factor. Barmore is up to an 87. Adibo and Gonzalez are coming around. So the core collection of our defense is looking really, really good. But at safety, Braid has not progressed as much since his rookie year. Mapu is still kind of just being mid. Linebackers have not really progressed that much. We still have a lot to do in the back end. But I do think right now, we have a, at least a couple of stars and some nice core players on our defensive line and you know, at corner. Season recap. Oh my goodness, the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl 58 to 52. But the really only important thing is that Lacey did win Defensive Rookie of the Year. And I guess back to back years winning Rookie of the Year award is pretty cool. But we need to start hitting on some more draft picks to really start getting this reboot under control. Last look at players ready to hit the market. I am going to accept Gonzalez's fifth year option, but Juju's gone. Bentley is gone. Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to bring any of these guys back. Well, there's a lot of really good players. I mean, the 49ers are basically having their entire roster hit the free agent market with McCaffrey, Ayuk, and Kittle. Mark Andrews also on the market, but I don't know. Even Debo Samuel. Wow. So the 49ers basically lost their entire roster, but man, look at this right here. Garrett Wilson, 93 overall. 26 years old dude we need him so badly we need a stud wide receiver so so badly i'm gonna give garrett wilson a huge contract and i'm praying this time we can get somebody this talented and zach tom here 85 overall he has a lot of interest signing for us i'm gonna give him a three-year deal and we'll just see because i think we do need to tackle i might draft one early in the draft but just in case take him and he will help definitely shore up our offensive line and this probably is not the smartest thing but i think i am going to give christian mccaffrey a two-year deal just so we can have some nice pieces around Jaden daniels he can develop up to being like a 90 90 plus a two-year deal is not too much we have him for, for age 30 age 31 and then after that you know then we can move on but i think for right now we have the cap space give mccaffrey two-year deal and we'll see if we can get mccaffrey Garrett Wilson, Zach Tom, a nice collection of some good players that we definitely need on offense. First eval down, and we did get Christian McCaffrey, which is cool, but the one that I want to see is Garrett Wilson. And we did not, oh my goodness, we cannot get a wide receiver to come to New England. Garrett Wilson, Brandon Ayuk, we needed one of those guys, we did not get him. We did get Zach Tom though, which is cool, but I think Debo Samuel now, I. I really don't want to sign Debo to a four-year deal. He's age 30. I'll give him like a two-year deal, that kind of Christian McCaffrey deal, and I'll see if he signs it. If not, it's whatever, but we'll see if we can get like the 49ers as complete offense. Uh, I'll just do an eval here and we'll see. We're not going to get Debo, so it looks like we're striking out besides Christian McCaffrey. Here we are in the draft, and I am going to take finally a tackle with this selection. Braden Webb at left tackle looks like an amazing player. Oh my goodness. Elite, 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 great and elite. The mock draft did have me taking this right tackle. Peter Justice, we'll see if he has similar physicals. He does, it's not as good. And it looks like, since I do have the scouting max stat, he's around two, or two to three talent. So my selection is gonna be Braden Webb out of Oregon. Just solidifying the offensive line, he is going to be hidden dev, 92 strength, 86 acceleration. And now we have two bookend tackles, maybe move the guy we drafted a couple years ago to the guard position. And uh, I just, I really like how our offensive line is now. And my second round pick is going to be Randy McAllister, a center out of Auburn, 6'1", 296 pounds, 23 years old. And our offensive line should be complete now. If these guys are as good as I think they will be. We should not have to draft another lineman for the rest of this video. Third round, Sean Darby, right outside linebacker. It is a need for us. 
elite agility, elite change of direction, great speed, great acceleration. Has all the metrics, he is going to be hidden dev, and he looks to be like a fairly good player. 85 speed, 89 agility, 89 acceleration out of Notre Dame. I hope and think we got a fairly decent linebacker at a weak position on our defense. Why not double down and take another linebacker? Jamie McGee out of Florida. He's got really good metrics, elite speed, elite jumping. That's all I really need to see. 4 4 6, 40 yard dash. He's going to be normal dev, which means he's probably not going to be too good. But 90 speed, 80, 87 excel. That's pretty good here in the fourth round, but I don't think he's going to be a long-term answer for us. This might be my best overall draft. Webb is a 78 overall. McAllister's a 75. Darby's a 73. Two more 74 overalls. I love the CPU draft. Eek, a tight end from Western Michigan. And then Lewis, who probably won't make the team. The best player in the draft is definitely somebody we could have used. Joshua Smith out of Florida, but I did not have a late first or a pick to really trade up. A Blades, I know the running backs are two really good running backs in this draft, which would have been nice to get one of those guys, but Austin Sherman, a corner, Clayton Cox, and then a couple of wide receivers. So this looks like a pretty deep class and not even our player, which was the best offensive lineman until pretty far down the board, but a couple quarterbacks. And I'm really happy that we did get the best offensive tackle. We desperately needed that. And here is the roster heading into year number three with Jaden Daniels. And this is definitely the best team that we've built around him so far. McAllister and Webb are in at our offensive line. And our line finally looks really, really good. I think McAllister and Webb will both be lower to mid eighties after the season. So our offensive line will probably be one of the best in the league. We still have Pitts and Peak actually was a hidden dev, which is kind of cool. McCaffrey in a running back. So we have a stud, probably still one of the best in the game, but wide receiver. It's still just so, so pitiful. I thought that maybe Wilson or McConkie could have been a really nice player for us down the road, but they just have not developed at all. And we desperately need help. I wish we had Garrett Wilson. I wish we had Ayuk. One of those two would have made the offense really, really good. But until we get one or two of those really good wide receivers, I think our offense is still going to be pretty mediocre. But defensively, we have a lot of really, really good news. Lacey's up to an 86. He was definitely the right pick. Jeffrey Simmons is a 96, and I have to be honest, I was thinking about trading him because he's going to be 29 years old, looking for a new contract soon. I was thinking of maybe trading him for multiple first round picks or another really good player. I mean, the Eagles offered me Jalen Carter, but I wasn't too sure if I wanted to do that or not because we were going to have to pay him a contract, but he is four years younger. So I didn't accept the trade, but I did think about it. But Gonzalez, Adebo, we have two really nice corners, even Jones in the slot. Safety and another linebacker are probably going to be my next focus. I mean, I do like Edrin Cooper. He's up to a superstar dev, which is awesome. Ebedike, he's a solid option at left outside linebacker. But McGee could be replaced. We'll see what Darby can do this year. And we need an impact safety in the back end. So we're going to see after this year for agency and once again, the draft. I'm hoping we can at least be an eight plus win team this year and maybe just maybe sneaking to the wild card that'd be awesome here is the draft class and once again two really good wide receivers i have a little bit more optimism this year than i have the past couple of years in terms of i think we can win eight to nine games this year so we probably won't have one of these top picks we'll see though but of course some more linemen some more diff edge rushers as well but enrique parham Benji Oliver, a 6'6 receiver out of Miami. Those guys look fairly good, but we'll see if we're in a position to get any of them. But quick look at the draft class and the running back, Michael Wibley. So we could be in range for him. Keep your eye on him. We'll see how this draft develops and how the season goes. And even Mason Thomas, another middle linebacker. We'll see. There's some options though. And ladies and gentlemen, here comes the New England Patriots. 87 overall, 88 defense, 87 offense. And we are 5-1 through the halfway point. Finally, some hope. But we do have some players ready to negotiate, and our cap number is going a little bit down and a little bit more down every single year. Christian Barmore, I am going to give him a three year deal. He is going to sign with us. That's awesome. Marty Mapu is up to an 84 overall. I know I talked a lot of crap on him, but he has improved this year. Outside of him, I don't think I'm going to bring back any of these players. I might give him a neutral deal for now and see if he will accept it down the road. He will not accept it right away, but he is on my priority list. Bring back. Oh my goodness. 13 and 4 for the Patriots. Talk about overachieving. I did not expect to have this type of season. And this is why, stats wise 4,400 yards, 45 touchdowns, 10 interceptions for Jaden Daniels. 
throwing to basically Uber Eats receivers, he absolutely exploded in year number three. And I think McCaffrey was a big reason for that having a reliable run game. 1,700 yards and 20 touchdowns for McCaffrey. I doubted him at age 30, but oh my goodness, he's still a stud. Receiving to Mario Douglas. I mean, I guess somebody needed to have some production, but to Mario Douglas, we just made him into like a $20 million player, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns. I mean, he was third in the NFL in receiving yards, which is kind of crazy because I still don't think I want to bring him back unless he had a huge dev trade upgrade and he can be our wide receiver one or two now. But man, what a season. Jeffrey Simmons is still cooking 17 and a half sacks, eight and a half for Lacey, four and a half for Barmore. Interceptions wise, six for Edgerin Cooper in the middle of our defense and middle linebacker. That's unbelievable. And here's a look at the roster. The offensive line looks amazing. Kyle Pitts is up to a 99 overall. McCaffrey's still a 99. Jaden Daniels is a 96 with morale. Our receivers still have barely progressed at all, but defensively, Edger and Cooper's up to an 85. Lacey's a 91, Barmore's a 90, Simmons is a 98. Gonzalez and Adiba both in the 90s now. Mapu, I did get an extension done with him and he's an 86. The next year, we need another linebacker, a free safety, and then just some wide receiver help. And we're definitely gonna be one of the more talented teams in the league. But here's the playoff bracket. We are the number two seed. Despite winning 13 games against the Chiefs, just had an amazing legendary year once again. But we're facing off against the Browns. If we do win, we're probably gonna get maybe the Colts if they win. That could be an interesting matchup in round number two. But regardless, if we win, we're gonna have at least two home playoff games. Let's hop into it and bring back Playoff win to Gillette Stadium. Their top three players, Miles Garrett, a new quarterback, Mitch Barkley, Jeremiah Wusukaramo, and our top three are McCaffrey, Kyle Pitts, and Jeffrey Simmons. A little funny because none of those players are on the Patriots in real life. Looks like the Browns are starting off with the ball went three and out. We're gonna go down seven nothing. The Browns still cannot get anything going on offense. Low scoring game here in the first half. 7-0, 14 nothing. The Browns are gonna get a touchdown right before the end of half they also get the ball kind of a nice little double dip i think they might have turned it over 21 14 now entering the fourth we're going to get a field goal 24 14 and it looks like defenses are standing tall and the browns are going to score i'm going to hop in here only up by three points do have three timeouts let's run out the clock with Jaden daniels christian mccaffrey first and ten one first down basically ends the game and mccaffrey's going to pick it up on first down he is First down, that's basically gonna do it. Daniels had a very efficient day through the air. Only 162 yards though. Look at this Mitch Barkley guy. Oh my goodness, 340 yards, three touchdowns. I think he's only a second year player as well, but Daniels, three touchdowns himself and no turnovers. McCaffrey, 147 yards. He's just an absolute beast. Receiving Demario Douglas continues his good season. Al Pitts had a touchdown. I mean, Kide had a sack. Jeffrey Simmons had a sack or defense really stepped up once again. And my hunch was right. We are facing off against the Colts again in Gillette Stadium, but Jonathan Taylor, DeForest Buckner, and Quentin Nelson are their top three. That's pretty much realistic to real life. Our top three are the same, McCaffrey, Pitts, Simmons. Let's go ahead, take down the Colts and move to the AFC Championship game. Snowy here today in Gillette Stadium. That's gonna be a little interesting to see how the Colts play a dome team in this weather. Looks like we are starting off with the ball, did nothing with it. The Colts might have turned it over 7-0. They're going to drive down the field, though, and answer 7-7. And Jaden Daniels continue to put together another good offensive drive. He can. It's 14-7. Right before the end of half, I think we might have turned it over because we had the ball with 50 seconds left in our own territory. 14-14 and a half, 21-14. The Colts are still somehow staying in this game. But we're going to get the ball back. And let's hop in here and watch and see what's happening. First and 10 for the Colts. We just pinned them inside the five. And Jonathan Taylor with a decent run on first and 10. Second and five now. Will they snap it before the two-minute warning? It's like Anthony Richardson is their QB. He is going to snap it. Hand it off to JT up the gut again. Jeffrey Simmons is going to shut that down. And somebody on our defense make a play. And Jordan Cooper came in with a tackle there. But we need somebody to make a play here. Maybe force a turnover. Richardson drops back and throw to the sideline, and it's going to be caught by Josh Downs for a first down. The Colts are moving it. Colts are getting a little bit close to field goal range, almost at the 40-yard line, and our defense get a sack. So we're running a screen play to Jonathan Taylor, and oh my goodness, he's going to pick up around 20 yards that midfield. Anthony Richardson again dropping back. 
plenty of time across the middle of the field again due to their wide receiver. Still waiting for somebody to make a play. Jonathan Taylor's going to run it. I don't know about that play call. Richardson out of the shotgun. Going to hand it off to Jonathan Taylor, and he's going to pick it up. They might be in field goal range. Maybe five more yards because of the snow, but they are very close to hitting a game-winning field goal. Another run to Jonathan Taylor, and a huge run. They're definitely in field goal range now. Very disappointing effort from our defense. Rod Mayo is going to ice the kicker, and I think this is going to be around a 45-yarder. Jake Elliott looks to be their kicker, and Shane Steichen looks on as the Colts look to punch their ticket to the AFC Championship game. Here's Elliott for the game winner. It's up, and it is good. The Colts are going to take down the Patriots in a snow game. Very disappointing end of the season. Jaden Daniels did not have a great game. 163 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Rushing-wise, only 75 yards for McCaffrey. Receiving not really any target. Could really stand out for us. Cal Pitts had a good game, but no receiver. That's definitely going to be something of emphasis in this offseason. Sacks-wise, Sean Darby with another sack. Our rookie really balled out this year. The team exceeded expectations this year, winning 13 games in a playoff game. We did have a chance at home with the lead to make the AFC Championship game, but came a little bit short. Season recap, the Colts went on to win the Super Bowl against the Lions, and their Super Bowl MVP was Jerome Baker. What a weird season. Players ready to negotiate Jaden Daniels is now a superstar X Factor. Of course, we're going to accept his fifth year option. The Mario Douglas gonna let him walk, although he did get an upgrade to star dev. Keon White, Jake Andrews, yeah, I'm gonna let all these guys walk. And not a great free agent class. We have $75 million in cap room, but Tyree Kill, Chris Jones, and Legereus Sneed are the top three players. But Tyree got 33, does not have a lot of interest in playing for us. So I'm probably not gonna even put in an offer. I guess I'm gonna give Rondell more, just a small contract since we do not have a lot of wide receivers. He's an 84 overall. We'll just bring him in and hopefully draft somebody this year, or maybe even trade if we do not have anybody top of our board that we can get here towards the end of the first round i'm going to take this power back will brooks i looked at the wide receiver market to see if there was anybody worth trading for even trading up for one of the top wideouts was going to cost me probably three first three seconds maybe even a player like it was just not going to happen so i stayed with my pick will brooks hidden dev 92 speed 91 agility just planning for after McCaffrey since he is going to be 31 this year. So we'll see if we even bring him back after the season. So we need a, kind of an insurance plan. That's Will Brooks. Second round pick is going to be Steve Roach. We need another safety. 21 years old. He's got fairly decent metrics. And he is going to be normal dev. 92 speed. 86 jumping. I mean, he has pretty good metrics. But again, you really want that hidden dev. Just going to take a flyer on this wide receiver here in the third round. Mike Boston is 6'5", 224 pounds, and he ran a 4'37 and has a 40-inch vertical. He's going to be normal dev, of course. I can just not find wide receiver. I can't do it. I'm fairly happy with this draft. Brooks is a 77, Roach is a 77, and a 74 for Boston. Three fairly decent players at the top of our board. Well, here's a look at the team heading into year four with Jaden Daniels. The offensive line is really good. Pitts and Peak, a guy that the CPU drafted. We have a nice duo of tight ends. And with how our wide receivers are, you kind of need the offense in the, in the passing game to run through them. Defensively, Simmons is still really, really good. Lacey is still really, really good. Cooper is an 83 superstar. Secondary looks really, really good now. We just need linebacker to emerge and hopefully one of these safeties and our defense will probably be really, really good again. Quick look at the draft class again and look at that. Three wide receivers in the top five, Emmanuel Cameron, Antonio Fitzpatrick, and Victor Barrett. If we cannot go on to have a great season once again, I'm going to trade the farm for whatever one is the best because I desperately need a star wide receiver. Not a great start for the Patriots halfway through the season, three and four, and it looks like the defense is what's struggling. Not good in points per game or against the run or the pass. Just overall, not too good, which, which is a little weird, but three and four still manageable to go on a playoff run here. Only losing by one point against the Chiefs and Sim. Pretty good. $64 million in cap room, and we have a lot of players to re-sign this year. Jeffrey Simmons is one of them. Gonna give him a neutral deal. He likes it, but he needs to think it over. Christian Gonzalez wants a contract. 
Edgerin Cooper wants a contract. Christian McCaffrey wants a contract. Marcus Jones, Kevin Dotson. Gonzalez, though, definitely gonna have to bring him back. He's gonna sign with us. Edgerin Cooper, he's developed a lot. I would really want him back as well. He doesn't want to sign yet. McCaffrey is starting to decline a little bit at a 96. Marcus Jones, I might just go in the draft and find another corner. I think my focus right now is going to be on Jeffrey Simmons and Cooper, and then the rest of these guys will kind of figure it out at the end of the year. And that is how you end the season. The New England Patriots, 11 and six, win the AFC East by three games. Not a great year for the division. Stats wise, another amazing year for Jaden Daniels, 4,300 yards, 37 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, 1,500 yards and 17 touchdowns for Christian McCaffrey, receiving 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns for Pitts, Vasquez, almost 1,000 yards, Rondell Moore, almost 1,000 yards, 15 and a half sacks for Simmons, 11 and a half for Lacey, interceptions wise, three for Gonzalez, one for Darby, one for Roach, our defense, I think, started to play a little bit better. Development-wise, this is what the team is looking like. 98 overall for Jaden Daniels. Rondell Moore is up to a star dev. McCaffrey is still a 99. Offensive line looks amazing. I can't believe how well we actually rebuilt that. Defensively, Simmons and Lacey, just an insane tandem on the defensive line. Really, all 80 plus is Roach. I put him midway through the season over raid and actually looked like he had a fairly nice end to the season the defense looks really really good 93 overall 92 overall offense 92 overall as a complete team and i think we have a chance here we can just string together a couple wins feed mccaffrey i think we can go on a run here and the colts they snuck in as the seven seed they get to face off against the chiefs they're kind of our rival because they took us out last year but the texans the number one seed the chiefs are the two seed the texans roster is kind of just insane might be seeing them next round, actually, depending on how a couple of those other matchups go. The Jaguars' top three players, Evan Ingram, Trevor Lawrence, and ETN, and our top three, Kyle Pitts, Jeffrey Simmons, Christian McCaffrey, 92 overall versus 88. Let's get it done. Looks like the Jags are going to go right down the field. Seven, nothing early after the first quarter. Once again, driving down 7-7 seven, seven to the Jags. Once again, are going to punch it in 14 to 7, a slight deficit here, 14 14. The Jaguars trying to get points before half, and they do. 21 14 down, looks like 20 21. And defensive battle end off the third quarter, 28 to 21. We're in the red zone, though. We're going to score 28 to 28. And we have a legacy Jaden Daniels drive. And it looks like we are. We're in field goal range, fourth and one. I'm actually going to go for this here with Christian McCaffrey, best running back in the sport. Pick this up. Do not give the Jags the ball back. And looks like McCaffrey's going to pick it up. Huge play from the star running back. That was a little bit close. But our kicker is Jason Sanders, perfectly lined up from the six yard line. Going to let it go right now. And the Patriots are on their way to the divisional round once again. A nice win at home. Daniels and Lawrence had an absolute shootout. 271 yards and four touchdowns for Daniels. 116 yards for Christian McCaffrey. Receiving Rondell Moore had four touchdowns and 133 yards. It looks to be like a pretty good signing. Defensively, Simmons had two sacks and Lacey had a sack. Just an insane combo. And we are going to get the Kansas City Chiefs. So this is not going to be an easy route. If we do win this game, we probably have to go on the road to the Texans. So beat the number two seed, the number one seed en route to the Super Bowl against maybe the number one seed Detroit Lions, but one game at a time. The Chiefs top three players are Mahomes, Rishi Rice, and Pacheco. Our top three are the same. 92 overall versus 90. We have the overall advantage once again. Let's go in Arrowhead and take down the dynasty. A snow game here today at Arrowhead. 7-0 for the Chiefs fairly early, 7-7. Seven, seven. After the end of the first, we have to be able to stop Patrick Mahomes today with our pass rush if we are gonna win. 14-14 now, coming towards the end of the half, we have the ball. We're gonna score a touch, and that was really, really big. 21-14 going to the break, 28-14 now. We are starting to run away with it here, but the Chiefs, always with Patrick Mahomes, are gonna bring it back. 28-21, two minutes to go. We're gonna kick a field goal, make it a 10-point game. And I think if we get the onside kick, it's over. It is over. Gerard Mayo is moving on to the AFC Championship game after taking down Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs. Jaden Daniels probably had a great game. 250 yards and three touchdowns, no turnovers, 144 yards and a touchdown for Christian McCaffrey. 
Vasquez had 82 yards and a touchdown. Al Pitts also had a touchdown defensively. Lacey had a sack. What a pick that was for us. But the most important thing, we're moving on to the AFC Championship. And we do, in fact, have a showdown against the Houston Texans. They defeated the Bengals 27 24. And now we're heading on the road to NRG Stadium, face off against the Texans. And hopefully, we can beat back to back really, really good teams. Their top three players, Will Anderson, Brandon Ayuk, who should be a Patriot, and Christian Harris, 92 overall, and our top three are the same. 92 versus 92. See how this goes. The scene is set, and we're going to go down the field and kick a field goal for our first possession. The Texans can't score either. Kind of a defensive battle so far here in the first half. But we're going to take a 6 0 lead. No touchdowns yet. 6 0 still at half. And once again, no touchdowns yet. 14 0. 14 7 entering the fourth quarter. Can we add another touchdown? Make it a two possession game? We can. 21 7. Can we stop CJ Stroud one more time to seal the game? We can. It is over. The New England Patriots and Gerard Mayo and Jaden Daniels are going to the Super Bowl after a pretty commanding game here at NRG Stadium against the Texans. They really couldn't get anything going all game long against our defense. Daniels had a touchdown and 212 yards. Fairly efficient game. No turnovers. McCaffrey, 76 yards and a touchdown. Defensively, DeForest Buckner for them had three sacks, but... Max Snead, our defensive tackle, our rookie. I don't even know who this dude is. Had two and a half sacks. Ebi Ketty had a sack. Darby had a sack. Barmore had half a sack. The defense showed up, and now we're headed to a massive game and the biggest one yet of this rebuild. And our Super Bowl matchup is going to be against the Detroit Lions, who have been blowing people out. 41 to 20 against the Vikings. 40 points against the Giants as well. Our defense is really the strength of our team, and it looks like their offense is their strength. This is going to be a fairly entertaining game. 91 overall Lions, Panay Sewell, Aiden Hutchinson, and Amonra St. Brown are their top three. Ours are the same. We have a slight advantage in this game. Let's take down the Lions and win the Patriots their seventh Super Bowl title. And we are in Tampa Bay for the Super Bowl. And it looks a little bit rainy today, which is going to be a little interesting. Jared Goff doesn't play well in bad inclement conditions, but it could be kind of good for our defense today. Here come the Detroit Lions and Jared Goff, and it is absolutely pouring. Here come the Patriots led by Jaden Daniels. Let's get this Super Bowl underway. Looks like the Lions went three and out, and now they're driving. Three nothing early. And Jaden Daniels answer. He can't. 7-3. Once again, the Lions are going to go down and score. And 7-13-7. Seven, seven. Can we score before half and take the lead? We can. 14-13. We're going to get the ball back once again. Can we double dip? Can we double dip? We're going to get no points. 21-13 now in the third quarter. Driving down once again. It's going to be 24-13. And now it's 21-24. I'm going to hop in here. Pick up a couple first downs for the team and clinch this Super Bowl. Here we go, Jaden Daniels. I'm going to find our backup tight end up the seam for a huge gain, and we're inside the 23-yard line. It looks like Jaden Daniels has been airing it out over 400 yards passing. I think he's going to be trying to go for Tom Brady's record, but here we go. Inside two minutes, all we have to do is pick up one first down, and we're going to clinch the Super Bowl. Second and 10, McCaffrey right up the gut, and I think I have it. McCaffrey's gonna break a tackle and pick up the first down. Gonna do something crazy here and hope I don't regret it. Gonna run a little play action here. Snapping with one second and Daniels is gonna get outside and it looks like I'm gonna be chased down, but I'm gonna find the tight end. And that's the that's the Super Bowl clincher. It's over. What a throw from Jaden Daniels on the run to win this Super Bowl. And it is over. The New England Patriots have won their seventh ring. The celebrations can now begin and Jaden Daniels cannot believe it. He had one hell of a game. Let's take a look at these numbers because I think it's going to be ridiculous. 409 yards passing, three touchdowns. He did have one interception, but what a game from Daniel. 78 yards and a touchdown for McCaffrey. Receiving who caught all these yards and touchdowns? Rondell Moore, 213 in the touchdown. Vasquez had a touchdown. And Jared Wiley, that was who caught the biggest touchdown of the game. I think it was our third stringer. Season recap, the Patriots defeated the Detroit Lions 31 to 21. Jaden Daniels won Super Bowl MVP. And I wanna show you guys one last look at the roster before I end this video. We are officially a 92 overall and look at Jaden Daniels. He's up to a 99 himself. 
McCaffrey, who we signed, which is kind of funny, is a 99. Rondell Moore and Vasquez were our two best receivers throughout this entire video, which is probably a new record for me in terms of winning a Super Bowl with not top and wide receivers. I guess we did have Kyle Pitts, who's a hard 99. The offensive line that we built from scratch is really, really good all 85 plus and then defensively we really rebuilt this from the ground up as well getting Lacey to pair with Simmons Barmore really progressed Edger and Cooper Darby our linebackers also safeties in Mapu and Roach Gonzalez is a 97 and Debo's a 91 one of our first trades of the video the most important thing was getting Jaden Daniels to develop and we got him to a 99 overall superstar x factor and a Super Bowl trophy and the Super Bowl MVP trophy as well. But that is going to do it for me. Let me know what you think about the rebuild and what you think about Jaden Daniels to the Patriots. Should they draft him in real life? Should they go after another quarterback or maybe another position and go the veteran quarterback route? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But subscribe to the channel if you are new. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next one.